Welcome to Ask Endocrinologist channel. I am Dr. Grace. I'm an endocrinology fellow and I'm also board certified in internal medicine. This is the platform where you can ask any question about your hormones. So together with me is Dr. Hope. Hello, I'm Dr. Hope. I'm an endocrinologist. I uh, I'm an attending for over 20 years and I'm board certified in endocrinology. And we're happy to join you and for you to join us today as we talk about um, what is that type two diabetes. Yes, so we should talk about type two diabetes today. As a lot of people, it's a very uh, common health condition and uh, it's common worldwide in the whole world. Almost everyone in, Almost everywhere in the world has type 2 diabetes. So what exactly is type 2 diabetes? I'm glad you asked, Grace. <laughs> so yeah. type 2 diabetes, by definition, is a lifelong disease marked by high levels of sugar in the blood. Uh, the cause is a sugar called glucose that enters the bloodstream. Um, glucose is a source of fuel for the body. An organ called the pancreas makes insulin. So the role of insulin is to move glucose from the bloodstream into the muscle, fat, and liver cells, where it can be used as fuel. People with diabetes have high blood sugar. This is because their pancreas does not make enough insulin or their muscle, fat, or liver cells do not respond to insulin normally or both. So type 2 diabetes specifically is the most common type of diabetes. It usually occurs in adults. So in type two, the pancreas does not make enough insulin to keep blood glucose levels normal or because the body does not respond well to insulin. Usually the body is resistant to insulin. You have just been diagnosed of type two diabetes or you've had it for a quite a long time. We know that this can be very, very challenging, but everything you do for your health is worth it. So how do you know if you have type 2 diabetes? Right. So one of the ways you know you have type 2 diabetes is uh, by the symptoms. You may find that you're urinating a lot, uh, you're very thirsty, or you have blurred vision, or maybe you feel weak or find that you're losing weight. Those are some of the common symptoms of type 2 diabetes. So if you have those symptoms, you should check your blood sugar or go to the doctor and have the doctor check your blood sugar. And if it's high, meaning if it's above 126 when you're fasting or randomly at above 140, then you should really eva be evaluated for diabetes. So <clears throat> the symptoms usually occur after several years, and some may even go on without even having the symptoms. And that's why it is very important to know the risk factors for this type 2 diabetes. So what are the common risk factors that people should look forward into to be able to prevent themselves from progressing into um, complications of diabetes? So some of the risk factors for diabetes, well, the most important risk factor is obesity. So people with obesity are at highest risk of type 2 diabetes. And that is really one of the main reasons why diabetes has, has spread more. Um, and the, throughout the world, people have become more obese. And because of that, uh, people have developed diabetes more often. So definitely obesity is one of the greatest risk factors for type two diabetes. Uh, family history. So a person who has a parent, brother, sister, you know, with diabetes is definitely um, more likely to develop diabetes themselves. Um, the older age, as you get older, uh, patients, uh, people over age 45 are at higher risk for type two diabetes. And there's certain et ethnic groups that are at higher risk for type two diabetes as well. Um, that includes Native American Indians, African Americans, uh, Hispanic Americans, Asians, and Pacific Islanders. Uh, other people at risk are patients who've had a history of gestational diabetes. That means 
while they were pregnant, they developed diabetes. And even though it may have resolved after they delivered the baby, they still are at risk of developing type 2 diabetes later on. Other risk factors include high blood pressure, high cholesterol, or um, high triglycerides even, and patients who are not getting enough physical activity. So if you're not as active, um, then also that is uh, one of the risk factors for developing type 2 diabetes. Yeah. And one of the things we also mentioned the last video is about pre-diabetes. And we have discussed extensively about pre-diabetes and what you can do to prevent pre-diabetes. So pre-diabetes, -pre you can watch the video from the previous one so that you can learn more about it. So um, it's best once you know these risk factors, talk to your doctor so they can check you out for diabetes. It's best to not wait until you have the symptoms before you get yourself treated and manage the diabetes. So how do we actually manage this diabetes if paraventure the person has been diagnosed of diabetes? What can the person do? Okay, so the first thing is lifestyle modification. So we need to change our lifestyle or improve our lifestyle uh, to help control diabetes. And the key is one diet. So sugars, the, the foods that are higher, highest in sugars are of course, you know, uh, sweets, but in addition to that, starchy foods, foods with high carbohydrates, like rice, bread, pasta, even potatoes, those are all high in carbs that turn into sugar. They break down into sugar in the body. So we would have to really cut down the portions of those types of foods and increase the portions of foods that are lower in sugar and carbs, like vegetables and even, you know, some protein, but mostly vegetables, um, a little uh, a quarter, a quarter of our plate should be protein, quarter of our plate should be the carbs and half the plate should be vegetable. So really increase the vegetable intake. That's one of the main things. Um, become more active. You know, it's recommended that we get at least 30 minutes, more than at least five days a week of some type of aerobic exercise. So if we can yeah. at least try that, that will help. Mm -hmm. Yes. Go so ahead. regarding the food, uh, I know this could be very challenging on knowing what to eat. A lot of people always ask me in the clinic, like, what they don't even know what to eat anymore with the way you explain what to eat coming from different background different home setting a lot of people have different recipe that they eat so how do we deal with this challenge of diet especially yeah you know i i would tell people you don't have to cut out all your, your ethnic food that you're used to eating like and just change your diet totally you can actually work within the types of foods that you eat but control the portions and portion, um, control. portion control is very key, you know? So we, again, increase, increase the vegetable content in your meals and decrease the carb content. And you, it's best to work with a nutritionist. Once you find out that you are diabetic or pre-diabetic, um, you should definitely work with a nutritionist specifically to help you make those changes in your diet right. but portion control is the key awesome okay and you were talking about the exercise as well um what kind of exercise can they do is or do they just have to do any kind for 30 minutes per day um as mentioned so the the advice? the simplest yeah. yep and the most basic thing is walking walking is exercise so what we recommend or what is recommended is that you can, you should walk continuously for 30 minutes, at least, um, at least five times a week. And that is a form of exercise. Like some people may be more active. They may choose to run. I, I personally am a jogger, so I like to, I like to run. Um, so that exercise can be running. You can use an elliptical machine, you know, treadmill, or you can just walk in your neighborhood, but a little brisk, more brisk than you're used to. Um, but continuously for 30 minutes. That alone is, um, is exercise, and that, that definitely uh, increases your physical activity and helps with your overall health and well-being. 
Awesome. So um, aside this exercise, diet, I know family support is also part of a thing that needs to be considered. And other health, uh, other health care teams, you know, the nutritionist, the diabetic educator, and all those stuff. But um, right. at what point can we say we need to start giving medication uh, to someone who have diabetes? Right. So once you're diagnosed with diabetes, no matter how mild or severe it is, you definitely it is recommended that you start medications. Um, usually, uh, we we always ask patients or your doctor or um, usually or your healthcare provider will always include lifestyle intervention so that you don't neglect lifestyle intervention once you start medication you continue you know to watch your diet and exercise more but once you are diagnosed with diabetes you also need medications in a diff in addition to lifestyle interventions so is diabetes curable uh so with diabetes you can go into remission so if you lose weight um, some patients, some people, uh, become their diabetes, uh, goes, goes away and their blood sugars become normal. If they lose at least like some people, 10% of their body weight, um, you can actually go into remission, um, and your sugars can, uh, recover and you, you may not be in the diabetic range, but that, that that's not true for everybody. Um, but with some patients with significant weight loss and lifestyle changes, um, their diabetes can go into remission. Good. So what can we do to prevent the complications? Or if I don't take medication, I'm not compliant with all these things you mentioned. Are there complications? Are there things that can happen to a diabetic patient? Yes. Yes. Unfortunately, uh, there are complications of diabetes. So there's something called microvascular and then macrovascular complications. It's a, a, a basically um, diseases that affect the small blood vessels and then the larger blood vessels. The, the, the larger blood vessel diseases are you patients are at risk for heart attack and stroke um, with diabetes, untreated diabetes. Also, people are at risk for um, diabetic retinopathy or eye disease, and which can lead to blindness, unfortunately. Um, kidney disease is a risk, and also nerve damage and uh, vascular disease to the point that some people actually need amputations. So all of those are risk factors with untreated diabetes. So definitely those things can be prevented with medications and lifestyle intervention yeah. so uh, as you have heard today if you have type 2 diabetes it is best to pr protect and take care of yourself better this is in a way to prevent you from having further complications of diabetes and in order to do so we encourage you to test your sugar very often with the glucometer there is a video about how to check your sugar with glucometer Test your sugar every time and not just that, also make sure that you I, I check your hands, your feet to make sure that you do not have any uh, form of skin disease or skin breakdown. Talk more about what other, what kind of food you can eat with uh, a nutritionist and see how you can live healthier. Together we can live healthier. So let's stay healthy and for now, we will stop it right here for today. Thank you. Thank you for joining us.